Hey everybody. I am so very, very, very happy to see that Love & Hip Hop New York is back. And the reason why I'm happy to see that it's back because I love the fact that they have brought back the OGs, the originals. It's so good to see them back. That's refreshing to me. I've kind of grown weary of the Love & Hip Hop Atlanta franchise and trying to keep up with 5011 people, all these different cast people that they put on there. I also thought they were putting too many people on New York, which I'm glad they kind of pulled back and they brought back a lot of the originals. I believe I saw Olivia and Samaya on some previews. So I'm just glad to see that they brought them back. I never really cared for it in Miami. Um, hip Hop Hollywood, loving Hip Hop Hollywood, eh, you know, I could take it or leave it. So I am glad to see that they have brought back a lot of the originals. So let's start off with Chrissy and seeing that Chrissy is back. Now, I like Chrissy, all right? I haven't always liked some of the stuff that she's done. You know, I always felt like she was a bit bullyish, but I've always, always liked her. I really have. And so when we see... The opening, we see her coming back. She's coming back to New York. She's coming back. And I also wasn't expecting to see her and Jim marry. I really what They've been together for 15 years. And I'm just like, you know what? Whatever works for them works for them. If they want to be boyfriend and girlfriend for 15 years, perpetual boyfriend and girlfriend, then let them. But then I thought to myself, <clears throat> after watching the full two episodes, I think I have an understanding of maybe why Chrissy did not become his wife. Now, I think she always wanted to be married to him. At first, I do think that was big. Remember, remember she got down embarrassingly on one knee and proposed to him. Then he trying to save face for her, proposed to her. But now that we've moved back and we see like they've been in this, this long, I have a feeling I know why Chrissy has decided, you know what, it's better to just be boyfriend, girlfriend, because this fool don't pay his bills. But we're going to get back. We're going to get that in a minute. Um, So she comes back to Jersey Jim is in his house living like a bachelor. And she also makes it clear that they haven't been, they've kind of needed space. They've kind of been living apart for the last several years. She's in Miami, he's in Jersey and that their relationship needed space. They were having some troubles. So they were need, they needed some space. In other words, don't come and tell me about Jimmy's business. If you see him with so-and-so, so and so don't sit here and be trying to tell me about this man because I don't, that I, I live down here. I, I just feel like it was kind of like the safe face. Like she made it clear that they weren't living together, that they boyfriend and girlfriend, I guess still, but they not living together. So I was like, okay, I guess, I guess we'll go with that. So she rolls up in the Jersey home. She looking around like, oh my gosh, why is it so messy up in here? What are you doing? Why are you living like this? And I'm just thinking to myself, well, you live in Miami. He's living like a bachelor. I'm sure in every which way. In every which way, I'm sure. And so she's saying, well, I'm coming back and I'm just wanting to like, kind of like right some wrongs. I want to resolve some unresolved issues with other people. Kimbella in particular, Kimbella's married to Jewels from Dipset. You were part of Dipset. I think we need to kind of get together and kind of make this right. Okay. I also noticed another thing about uh, Chrissy in this moment and how she... Really, if you look around and you kind of watch the dynamics of her and Jimmy and always walk, she's always been that person to clean up his messes, right? She's always been that one. And she always even said it like, oh, I got to get him back on track. I got to get this. I got to fix this. I'm going to fix mothering him. Mother, it's just another kind of toxic kind of thing you see going on with relationships where a woman feels like she has to baby and raise a man which is probably why her and Jimmy's mama never really got along because he had two mamas, okay? And they were both trying to raise a grown-ass man, but that's a whole nother story, okay? That's a whole nother video. So, um, yeah, she wants to go ahead and resolve things with Kimbella, all right? Now, then we move on to Yandy. Yandy's doing her activist shit like that. She's on that because, you know, she since Mendeecees has been in, she's been on her criminal justice grind, okay? So she's been, remember when she got pepper sprayed out there in front of that jailhouse? And I know that's not funny or nothing like that, but it was kind of like, I did kind of chuckle a little. Um, but yeah, she's been on her civil rights, criminal activist, you know, uh, criminal justice bag. And she's just been out there doing her thing. And so her friends show up to listen to her do this whole speech and everything. And uh, her friend Jonathan is there, Juju's there, Remy there, Rich Dallas. They all there to kind of support her. And Kimbella shows up. And now Kimbella and Yandy don't have the best of relationships. They, you know, they used to be as thick as thieves. They was very, very cool. And Kimbella felt a while ago that Yandy kind of left her high and dry when Kimbella was out there supporting her against Mendeecee's baby mamas. Like she had her back. And 
Cabela felt like, well, when I'm going through my stuff, you're not there, but I was there to help you. And so Cabela's feeling a type of way. And then Yandy feel a type of way because Cabela made some comment about the fact that she adopted this teenage girl on PR, just based on PR. She just wanted a good image and that Yandy is fake. Now I like Yandy, but I can't help but to think that perhaps there is some truth to the, I'm not talking about the whole adoption thing. I think there is some truth to the fact that Yandy do come off a little bit fake to me. And the reason why I think she come off a little bit fake to me is because this is the same woman who had a fake ass VH1 wedding special and they weren't even married. So, I mean, anytime people do like pull stunts like that, their credibility is always shot and should always be side eyed and questioned. So I can see why Kimbella maybe felt the way she felt. Then of course we move on to like Sin and Joe Sin and Joe, they are obviously not together. It was a grand open, grand closing on their relationship, their engagement. Joe mentions how Sin just up and moved out the house when he was on tour with the Joe Budden podcast and everything like that. And we're going to get into that a little later when we come to Sin, uh, Tahiri, and Joe. <clears throat> now, we got Safari and Erica expecting the baby, of course. They all love each other. They making sure that we see the love with their mouths open, licking all over each other. It's just disgusting. Uh, Safari seems like a nice guy, to be honest with you. He really does. But he's just kind of a cornball to me. I can't help it. I just find him so corny. But you know what? His Johnson is very, very big. So I could see why maybe some women thought, like, this, this, this dude is a lame, but he got a big ass. You know, I, let, me, let me get off of this. It's too early for that. But I'm just saying, I can see why women might stick around with a lame for other reasons, okay? We'll, we'll get off that for a minute. Now... Kimbella and Chrissy meet up to basically hash out their past differences. And Kimbella tells Chrissy that she has her guard up. And I can see why she would have her guard up. Hell, Chrissy molly whopped her. She literally punched her like that bus driver punched that girl off the bus and then started to stomp on her. So I can see why Kimbella might feel a type of way. But here's my issue with Kimbella uh, and Chrissy. Okay, now all of a sudden, what, after, the, after a decade, Chrissy, you want to hook up with her? You want to meet up with her? As if, like, because we are both part of Dipset, our men are part of Dipset. Well, they've always been a part of Dipset. Y'all could have squashed that ages ago. But it's whatever. I just don't like the whole idea of my so-called friend, me and my friend having issues, and you link up with a bitch that just mollywop, just stomped you out years ago on national TV, and you willing to sit down and squash your beef with her, but you can't sit here and squash a, a situation with me. We can't talk out our differences, but you willing to sit there and... Do that to a woman who publicly humiliated you on national TV. See, I'm a Scorpio. We don't, we just don't forgive that easily. So I, uh, when I see Kimbella and, and Chrissy like kicking it, I'm like, eh, that just bothers me. I don't know. But that, that, I don't like that whole linking up because we got a common enemy. Cause those, those things never work out. You linking up with my, nah, I just don't like any of that. I don't like that. So, um, I'll get into Joe and Sin in a minute. But, you know, Remy, Remy is off probation. Hey, Remy, you off probation. So she decided to have her Shawshank Redemption party. And she invited everybody out to celebrate. You know, Remy looking good. I can't hate. She is looking good. But the only thing I had to stop short of, Remy, is when you talk about you putting out some new music. I really need all your people, Papoose, Fat Joe, all of them, to stop pressuring you. And you don't need to sit here and be crying like you got all this stuff on your plate. You could technically take off the music. Take the music off your plate, Remy, because as much as I love you and the fact that you're doing, you're getting money, you do, got all these different things on, ain't nobody really begging for no Remy. My album, I'm sorry, that's how I feel. I just don't feel like people out here clamoring for another Remy, my album. But do your thing, mama. You still doing all your shit, okay? You got an eye for fashion, you got good style. Seriously, get into other stuff, but leave, just just start with the music, okay? Papoose is the musical one. He's the one that probably should, should still be doing some shit, but don't let them pressure you to put no more albums out, girl, because I just don't think that it's going to sell like that. I just don't. Sorry. That's just my opinion. So anyway, Remy is having her party, and she got everybody there. She got Juju, which dollar. She got John. Everybody is there, okay? Who's who is there? The whole cast is there, right? Um, even Safari and... um. And Joe Budden kind of squashed their little thing from last season, right? Rich Dollars is happy for Erica Mena and Safari's all good. Then you got Chrissy, dun, 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 walking to the party. And there you have Yandy and Chrissy looking at you like, ugh, you know, ugh, making my, ugh. You know, and so they pretty much start talking about uh, what happened between them. And Chrissy basically feels like Yandy overstepped her bounds 
overstepped her boundaries when she was managing uh, Jimmy and how she would get more into his personal life and his finances. And Yandy, I believe, and Chrissy are both alpha females. They're very, like, very similar, which is probably why they would not get along and what they weren't able to get along. Because you had a very strong female in Chrissy, you had a very strong female in Yandy, and both of them just was not, like, willing to kind of, like, relinquish any kind of control over this grown-ass man, all right? And so that, it just wasn't going to work. And I wish that Yandy would have been more receptive to maybe just having that conversation to put her guard down. But, and I don't know if that's part of it. It's scripted that they're supposed to keep beefing. But I just feel like I don't see this resolving itself because they both have very strong opinions about that. And I guess when you look at Yandy talking about, well, I was trying to like help him rein in his spending. Now that you look at the situation that's going on with Jimmy, you might say, well, shit, maybe she was right. And I'll get into that in a moment, okay? I'm not going to hit every little moment that happened in this because it's like two damn hours. I can't possibly hit it all, but I'm just trying to hit on the major points here, okay? Um, uh, uh, so we find out, I guess, when uh, all them, like I think Sin, Jonathan, Yandy, and then Kimbella and they come up and they're sitting there talking about Remy's party and everything like that. And then Yandy brings up the fact that uh, Chrissy's home, their home is getting foreclosed on. And Kimbella's like, oh, that's messy of you. That's messy, that's messy, mess, mess. Now, I feel like that was on purpose because, of course, you know Kimbella is going to carry that back to Chrissy and that's when all the hell breaks loose, right? I just feel like that's a part of the drama that is scripted. That's supposed to happen, okay? That's how it's supposed to be. And um, I'm going to kind of like wrap it up in a minute here. Tahiri meets up with Erica. Again, old school, old Tahiri. I love Tahiri. I love where she is. I love her grown woman shit. I do like the fact that her, she did not, like give into this whole thing with Joe and marry him. I think that would have been a disaster. I think he needed time to grow and he seems like much better now. He was also on drugs at the time too. So I think she did the right thing for herself. Tahiri meets up with Erica and they're talking and Tahiri's just kind of like giving Erica like, like a little word, like, listen, before you marry this man, walk down the aisle with him, you know, you should get a prenup, you know, can you really trust this man? Now, prior to that, the rumblings are already talking about the fact that Safari is seeing this other woman I think she's off the Love and Hip Hop Miami cast. And he out here proposing to other, this other woman and everything like that. And people just trying to like kind of put a bug in Erica's ear about the whole thing. And Tahiri's just kind of said in a very gingerly way, like, listen, you know, be careful with your shit. Get a prenup. I'm just letting you know. And then, of course, Tahiri and uh, Joe hook up. They look like they're just old friends. I don't really see much coming out of that. I know they're going to drum up the drama for it because it's TV, but I just think that they're just really good friends. I don't think that nothing's going to come out of this, but I like the drama of it. And I can't wait to see the whole dynamic between Tahiri and Sin. Okay. You know, Joe love his little Latinas, you know, he like his little, you know, Latinas. So it's kind of interesting. I'm going to like look forward to watching this whole thing unfold between Tahiri, Sin and Joe. Sin is claiming that Joe was out here cheating on her. Uh, she saw something in his phone. I'm down to know what was in his phone. And he's saying that he didn't. But Joe's never really wants to acknowledge when he's wrong. I don't know. And then, of course, seeing Storms off, take the microphone off and hop in the van. She run the van. They drive off or whatever like that. That's why, that's, that's the whole scripted part of it, right? I think that it was truly for drama because I did watch on, I was looking on Instagram that night that it aired. And I saw Maul, who is part of Joe Budden Podcast, showing his Insta story. Sin and Joe was sitting there watching that part of the episode together on the couch laughing. So that's why I'm like, okay, I, y'all acting. I don't believe every little thing. Y'all was just kind of like, Sin was doing her little acting thing. So we'll see where this goes. I'm, I'm just going to go for the ride. I know it's all acting. I'm going to go for the ride and kind of like just watch it like that. But um, here you have Chrissy who uh, Joe, I mean, um, what's his name? Jim has lost the house to foreclosure. Chrissy claims she didn't know that he lost the house to foreclosure. And remember, she's part of this organization, Lady Millionaires, where she invests her, other people's money into real estate. They have a lot of money and people are like, well, we're not going to invest our money with a person that has some issues with foreclosure. And so Chrissy goes on to basically say, my house, is, my name is on the deed, but not on the mortgage, okay? And that's another reason why I think she did not marry Jimmy because she knew that Jimmy wasn't doing what he needed to do and he wasn't paying his goddamn bills. That's why I, when I said stated from the beginning, early on, like, I think there's a reason why she never married him. Like, she wanted to marry him at first, but she didn't. And I thought, you know what? She went off and left, you know, left him behind. That kind of tells you a lot. 
that she over here living her life over here and he over here going through foreclosure and he ain't making enough money to pay his bills and the house went under, okay? Which is maybe why Yandy was trying to get his spending under control. I don't know. I don't know. But that was a lot to cover because it was two hours. And I know I didn't get everything, but I can't wait to see what comes of San Joe and Tahiri and also what comes of Erica and Safari. Although I kind of saw this play out in real time anyway on the internet, but I still want to see it. And I want to see what's up with Olivia and um, Samaya Reese. So let me know what you guys think about these two episodes. Are you team Yandy? Are you team um, Kimbella, team Chrissy? Let me know. And I will see you guys on the next video. I'm going to try to make sure that I review it every week. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you later. I'm going to head out.